What's up? Adam Argyle here. Today we are going to recreate something I thought was super rad in Android Beta 11. Check it out right here. It's this effect on these icons down here. Let me zoom in. It's these suggested apps down here. I loved that they sort of had this padding that was an accentuation, a desaturation, and a brightness that was added to the surrounding icon that really gives it this nice touch. And then there's a couple of shadows. There's a shadow on the icon, and then there's a shadow on the sort of surrounding padded self. So anyway, I really liked what was going on there. And I wanted to recreate it because to me, it kind of looked like something I might be able to do with backdrop filter uh, or just regular filter. The, the effect looked just so tangible to CSS and I had to see if I could do it. So follow along as I do it today. And as always, I'm going to be using post CSS and probably some grid and lots of modern uh, CSS stuff. And we'll see, we'll see how close we can get this to match the Android effect with the web. So uh, let's check it out. I have a couple of fun starters that I like to use. So we'll use the centered starter and uh, we're ready to go here. So we're not going to be writing any JavaScript and let's make one icon so the only thing i did to prep for this was i went and grabbed the icons so i grabbed a chrome icon and a twitter icon um you don't want to see me hunt for those that's that's annoying and uh, otherwise we're ready to go so let me title this this is um android 11 suggested icon ui with css something like that okay so um, let's start with the basics here. And in, oh, here, look, I'm writing CSS. In my uh, sort of checkout of this, the basics look to be, let's get that initial circle done. So um, yeah, we'll just start with that background circle before we even get to the icon itself. I'm gonna be adding styles here above the body. And you know what, let's, um, well, we'll come back to the body here. Let's add our app icon. Uh, basically, I want to give this a background so this can stand out from something. So the app icon, let's just say, um, and here we'll set a size. So size of 100 pixels, and we'll say width is the the size var, and we'll grab that and make one that's the same as the height. So I should see that. Um, let's do a box shadow so we can kind of see what we have so far and we'll just say x y uh, let's see is it anything on the y no this shadow looks to be kind of straight on so no uh, position adjustments we'll do just a blur of five pixels for now and we'll pass a half opaque black um, and we'll just see okay oh that reminds me we need to set our border radius uh, and 50 percent should work great here and we'll set the overflow to hidden in case anything. And you know what, let's only set overflow to hidden if we find that we need to. Okay, so we have our initial circle. Uh, hopefully nothing too surprising here happening yet, but let's make it pop off the background. Let's make it pop off. I'm just gonna do background image, linear gradient. Uh, we're gonna say uh, deep pink to re cyan. Let's do cyan, deep pink to cyan. Yeah, and then we'll say to bottom right. Cool, that looks hipster to me. And um, okay, we don't need a background white on our item here yet, but we'll get there because that background color, we want that to come from the icon. And if we want that to come from the icon, that means uh, we're gonna need that, that data, so that URL data. I'm thinking we use custom properties and say like icon URL, and we'll say in here, you know, I'll grab the asset right here out of code pen. So I've got my Chromium URL. We'll copy that as a URL, paste that into there. And okay, so now that's stashed in a, um, a, a CSS variable. We can use that in a background of our app icon. So we've got our box shadow here. Uh, before here, we'll say background image is our variable called uh, icon URL. And there we go, it's a nice big image. Okay, so we're gonna say background, uh, size, contain, or cover really is what we want. We want cover, and um, that that looks to be sufficient for right now. Um, okay, we've, we've got our background image on that initial circle. Now, I was thinking that we would do the uh, manipulation of that from the child item itself. So what we need to do now is put uh, the actual icon on top of this in a way that it is uh, has a background that can use backdrop filter on the item behind it. 
So uh, in order to do that, we need an icon uh, class or just here, let's just do a span. We don't even really need to do anything fancy here. And inside of here, I think we do an image that has our source. No, actually, I don't think we need to do that. I think we can do another background image um, here. Uh, no, let's stick with an image. Um, well, wait, do source here. We'll start here. Because I think because we definitely need two versions of the image. I don't think we need to get this into. We might build here. We'll be able to change some stuff up later. Let's just get like a work, a working version going here, and we'll go from there. Okay, so our app icon. We can see that we have some issues here. I think if I set display flex here, I can tell this direct child to kind of fit into the space. Mm, looks like we'll get there. Oh, let's see, that's app icon. Let's go to. Um, target that nested span. So I think I told the span to fit, but now I need the span to tell uh, the image to fit. Let's see. Okay, so we got somewhere with that. Um, all right, so we've got our stack. I can see that it's trying to fit inside of there here. And do I need to target my image and say uh, object fit contain yeah or cover oh contain was better all right so we're telling our span to display flex I think we want to say place items uh, center so we get them kind of on top oh no if we do that we're taking we're getting rid of the stretching that was happening I think we want to justify content center one of these needs to justify content center maybe it's this one Yep. Okay. So now we have our app icon with display flex. It's telling the span uh, to to be in the center. The span is looking at the image and telling the image to fill that space. So I think we're at a point now where we can say, "Hey, image, you should be, um, you know, like I don't know, ninety percent of the width of your print." We're trying to get that margin in there. Okay. And then in here we can say background. Uh, or we want it. Let's just try our backdrop filter. Backdrop filter, because now we have space between like our image and the parent item. We should have enough here to do like a blur. Let's try five pixels. Okay, we did blur that that backdrop. We might be seeing the effects of our overflow not working here. Uh, but let's check it out here. Okay, so we also are going to need a box shadow on. Our span so let's put that on here as well and that one does have a Y offset it was like you know if you look in there right down in here um, right here see that it's like only offset on the bottom whereas like the other shadows kind of offset all the way around the edge anyway okay so we've got the offset there of two pixels it's way less blur and we'll bring that down to okay so look we're also we also need to apply our border radius and our width and our height to um, this item so this is our span it needs backdrop filter so this is where we want to put border radius so that we're backdrop filtering within that contained space it looks like we contained it we also can see that our image isn't centered so let's um, place items in the center and see if that gets us in the center here oh that got us into the um, okay, we're just going to do align items center and justify content center. There we go. Okay, it looks like 90% is also not enough. See how there's like not enough perimeter here? It's kind of hard to even see the effect that we've achieved. Let's go to like 60%. Well, I hit command S and saved. Okay, well, looks like we're there. Hey, okay, that's um, kind of looking close. It looks like our box shadow is not working x y blur at, on our item here i'll have to we'll have to go figure out what's happening there um oh because we want it on the image right which also means our image uh needs a border radius of 50 percent, which means we could probably take it off that that parent one let's see no we need it all the way down okay so i wonder if we could even say border radius inherit uh, just for funsies, but who cares? Okay, okay, and 60% is not enough to here. Let's go 75%, or that was too much. 
boom, that looks like a similar amount of padding. We have proper shadows. Our shadows are too dark on this image. Let's see, because look, they're like pretty faint here. Pretty faint. Let's go 25% on that. That looks better. We can dial that back if we need to. The one in the background looks fine. Okay, so our backdrop filter blur is working. So let's just bump it up. Because that effect over here, as you can see, like the colors kind of all got mixed together. And let's go like 10. Sometimes this can be really strong. Okay, that's great. 15. Okay, we're getting closer. 25. 25 looks pretty good. I also noticed that the colors here are desaturated. So let's uh, get rid of some saturation by making this a number less than 100%. Okay, so I desaturated it. We lost some of the, the color, but we want to go back towards a lighter color. Let's talk about um, brightness and we wanna make this brighter like by, okay, that's cool. It almost looks like we have too much color in ours, which I am honestly kind of pleased with. I think that looks cool. Um, Cause yeah, it's like accentuating what's there. Um, okay, uh, what else do we have to do here? I mean, that looks pretty, li I think it needs to be lighter. I think it's a little too. Oh, that was too much. Okay, 1.2, so 120%. Sure, negligible. All right, um, let's make another icon because we need to be testing more than one here. So let's go to our assets, grab the Twitter copy URL and pass that into here. Uh, and we can select both and paste them together. Ah, excellent. Oh, and look, okay, that's pretty good. But let's, we have a display flex. Let's add a gap in here. Oh, let's do two rim, okay. Perfect, okay, so now that we're looking at these icons, um, let's uh, let's change our view so that these are next to the item over there. Oh yeah, look at that, okay. All right, so we can compare these. Looks like uh, we should be able to scale these too. Let's see if we can just scale these up by making this like, what, 300? How do we make these the same size as the ones over there? Whoa, I think we have a bug we should fix. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it looks like the our blur didn't scale well. Also, this is too big, so let's go 200. There you go. Okay, that's that's more fair. Um, all right. Well, how do we wait? Did we fix that that big issue that was here? That looks like a flex issue. That definitely looks like a flex issue. I wonder if we just say width 100% here, if we can get rid of that first little warp. Yep, that gets us both warps out. So we can say justify content stretch. Ah, what if we say uh, flex grow is one? I think the, I think grow, oh, okay. So we explicitly told it to grow and it was happy to grow. I think grow is um, default on align items, so that's why the height was stretched, but not for justify content. So by setting justify content to stretch, I'm explicitly saying, no, you should, um, the inline space, the one that's the horizontal position, you know, it's like you're justifying text. We want that to be stretched across that axis. And so that's what we did. We told it right there with a the flex grow, we solved our flex bug. Okay, uh, I wonder if that also means we can use, well here, align items, do we still need that? Yes, so that's centering. Okay, that makes sense. And our image here is contained. Everything's great. So what was the, that? oh, we fixed the bug. I do think this is still, oh, it was our blur. So maybe we calculate our blur based on size. Let's see. Calc, um, we have our var size times, um, so we wanted 25 pixels when it was 100, so times 0.25. Oh, okay. So uh, CSS is taking our pixels, we're multiplying it by 0.25, it's still coming back as pixels, and that looks <laughs> looks awesome. Um, oh look, we have some issues as these things, that would be display grid allowing, or that's display flex allowing these to, to kind of like go out of shape. And uh, that's something we could fix later. So anyway, uh, I think 
we've done it. Um, our shadows could also grow with our scale as well, like this blur could be a little bit more dynamic, but I like the effect that we got here. Um, let me just zoom in more so we can just, let's just get one. Ah, here we go. Okay. Yeah, I think our blurs are just, so as we scaled up, our blurs didn't scale well. Uh, we could, or it's like our, yeah, our box shadow blur here. I don't really care though. I don't think we need to fix that. Um, I think at the size that these were made for, which was a hundred, um, we were kicking butt. So let's zoom out here. Yeah, those shadows look really, really nice. Okay, so I'll save this um, and share it with y'all. But that was how I built, well, I guess that was how I wanted to build that. <laughs> um, these icons effects were really cool. I, we accomplished it with Flexbox and Backdrop Filter and uh, some custom properties. That was really fun. Um, that's the sort of stuff I want to do all day, every day. So here it is all wrapped up. We've got a flex container in the parent that's centering the items. Uh, we're setting the width and the height and a border radius. Uh, we're setting a background image. So we're taking the URL source, setting it on the background image of our, of our outermost circle. Then we're using an inner circle that's fit to the same size as the parent. So that's fit. Oh, here, let's just open up DevTools. Change view, debug mode. Let's dig in and give this a good inspect. Right, okay, and well here we'll do, this one seems to be the one I wanna do the most. All right, so our outermost, it has a background image and, uh, and that's pretty much it. It's setting the shape and the size. Our first child is fitting to that shape because of Flexbox. It's also creating its own Flexbox child. Um, it's becoming a circle and it's doing the backdrop filtering. Can we get rid of border radius here? No, so that's still containing the backdrop filter effect. Okay, cool. Then we have our image, which is with, uh, so it's 75% the size of the parent, and it's being centered by the parent with Flexbox. And it's also got a border radius set. Yes, that's to fix the square icons. Uh, it's likely an image, like in Android or wherever, you're gonna be getting a nice high res image asset for these. So uh, we just assumed that and put a border radius on there and put a box shadow on there. And we got away with all of this with kind of one filter trick. I hope that was really fun. I had a blast doing that. This turned out really cool and um, cool. Keep hacking on the web. I'll see y'all later. Bye.